But no damage here. That is praise the Lord. Hope everyone has been safe. Well, praise God for that. Praise God for that. Good morning, um, going out to be able to see anything yet. Yeah, so I don't know what it's got like, like around here, but I know I just did. I heard the wind. I definitely heard the wind. Good morning. You guys get a lot of hurricanes. I mean, not hurricanes, but tornadoes in Syria. Yes. Where? Yeah, I guess. Good morning, Pastor Natalie. Good morning. So good seeing you this morning. Good morning. Great to be here. Good morning. Daphne. Sister Bonnie, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, sir. How are you? Good morning. Blast. Blast. So good to so good to see you this morning, Laura. Oh, Audrey. Good morning, good morning, good morning. I'm going to. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. It's so good to see. Hey, Brother Joe. How you doing, Dr. Ells? Man, good morning. It's so good to see you this morning. How's everything? It's going well. Blessed to be here today. That's all we can say. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hey, we, we survived another one last night. Yeah, you guys all right up there in uh, Pasco Hernando area? Yes, sir. Hey. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It, 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 it's quite soggy, quite wet. <laughs> but, 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 we, but, but amen. Praise God. We, we are all right. Absolutely. The storm passed us over. Now, where are you? Well, I'm Joe. in Springfield. Oh, yeah, Joe. You asking Joe? Yeah, I was wondering where he is. Cause he, 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 yeah, I'm Joe. in the Sunshine City. I'm in uh, St. Pete. I live in Pinellas Point area. Okay, I got you. All right. You know, so where's the area? We're the Barrier Island for you guys. That's all I can say. <laughs> no, as uh, as Dr. L so eloquently stated, I just walked out in my front yard and it's pretty soggy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I haven't had a chance to get out, so I don't know what it's like around here, but we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. So we are... We are live on Facebook. Good morning, Will. Good morning, Linda. Good morning, Cindy. Good morning, Lisa Lacey. Um, Good morning, Elizabeth. I got a couple of other people here that I want to invite. Uh, this morning, as I am. Um, up and I up yesterday. <clears throat> Sandra Ferguson, how are you guys down in Fort Myers? We are well, thank you. Just a lot of heavy rain, but we're doing well. All right, good. Good to hear your voice. Praise I will God. touch back with you to, or later today. All right, no rush. And what about you, Elizabeth? How are you all doing? No power lines down. Trevor, Trevor Williams, praise God. So good to see you this morning. But how are you all doing? So far, where I am in Pinellas looks pretty good. I have not ventured outside us yet to see if there's anything down, but there was a lot of heavy rain and the winds were really kicking up. Okay, okay, all right, all right. Well, I'm glad to hear, to hear you and see you. I'm glad that uh, you are alive. Thank God, praise God, that the storm passed over you as well. Uh, good morning, Sister Tia Spellman. Good morning, thank you for joining us this morning. Uh, we're going to get started uh, here now. Um, just want to make a couple of announcements. Uh, I want to just welcome you all to uh, the Lifeline. And uh, we meet here uh, every, every, every week. It's a conglomerate of, 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 of faith leaders, uh, educational leaders, health healthcare leaders, uh, community community uh, leaders uh, around four, four 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 counties here in in, in Central Florida: uh, Hernando, Pasco, Pinellas, 
and uh, Hillsboro. And uh, I believe this is the 36, uh, what, 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 what we call it? Week 34. Week 34. Week 34. And, you know, I, I will tell you, you know, we are we, we are not just a group of people who meet every every Thursday morning. But we are we are fam we are fam. We are fam. And I want each and every last one of you to know uh, that I, I really do. There's no reason why I don't. I tell you, I, I love each and every last one of you. And I want you to know that today. Personally, individually, and collectively. Good morning, Imam uh, Hassan. Salam alaikum, Aki. So good to see you this morning, brother. Thank you. How, how are you? And how are you and the Muslim community? How are you all? And how did you all fare the storm? So we pray to God and God protected us. So we're thankful. Amen. Amen. Excellent. Very good. Uh, ex uh, good morning. Good morning, Pastor Liddell. So good to hear, see here and see you this morning. Good morning. How are you? Blast, blast, blast. How is it up there in New York? How do you all fare the storm? Uh, just light rain. I think tonight is when we get more of it. Okay, okay, okay. Well, we, well, we will be praying for you. We'll continue to pray that the storm will pass, pass you pass you over as well. Uh, just as a, a brief announcement, uh, Brother Rod is with us. Good morning, Brother Rod, but he will not be speaking this morning as uh uh he he, he has a speech he, can, he cannot talk uh he, he was told that he needs to rest rest his, his, his larynx so uh we're going to allow uh him to do uh just that so you will have uh myself and dr uh jackson of course uh to be your moderators this morning uh but we do have pastor uh natalie uh this morning that's going to uh, open us up with a, a, a word of prayer. Uh, Pastor Natalie Kaler, uh, it's all yours. And introduce yourself as well. Let us know who you are uh, and where you're from. Sure. So um, I'm coming to you from my office in Brooksville. I'm currently the uh, executive director of Brooksville Main Street, which is an economic development um, revitalization program. Um, that the Lord kind of prepped me for back in 2010 when he gave me Isaiah 58 um, as my assignment to study and work out. And um, so it was very cool as that journey led on and um, went through physical healing and then ended up coming on city council, um, becoming mayor, and then into this position, um, really working to be one of those people that rebuilds the city streets and makes makes our cities livable again. And uh, I know that that is my, my assignment from him right now, um, which makes it uh, sometimes easier and sometimes harder <laughs> uh, to complete on a given day. But, um, you know, but I know his heart for this community. And I know his desire for us to heal. Um, in lots of different ways and I have watched over the last 20 years that we've been here him bring um, believers to this community who are like-minded and who are desirous of building the Lord's kingdom and not their own personal kingdoms and those those pastors that did believe in their own little places I've been watching him move them out bit by bit and replace them with people that, that have a heart for the community as a whole and uh, I just think that's fantastic. So I, I think we're well positioned. I believe that he's moving. And um, that's what we do. Praise God. Amen. My husband and I did uh, pastor Victorious Life Church um, in Spring Hill for nine years um, until he uh, went back into uh, Christian education. And then I went into politics. So. Amen. Well, give us the invocation this morning. Absolutely. Heavenly Father. Um, we thank you for the glory and the wonder of your creation, uh, which last night again exemplified, Lord, that 2020 has been all about us thinking that we have control over things that we do not. And Lord, anytime you can break us of the illusion of control, it allows us to refocus on who we're really trusting in. And so God, we just pray that as we come to the end of 2020, that we would be able to look back at you and see how our 
trust and our um, reliance on you has grown. Lord, we just ask that we realize that, um, that our control is an illusion and that you are what is actually guiding things. And Lord, that we would fall in line with that and be happy with it. Lord, I pray that as difficult as, as this year has been for so many of us, that we would look at it as a gift in the way that you have allowed us to reevaluate and reassess and kind of take a pause from our normal life um, in a way that lets us, again, turn to you and make sure that we're prioritizing our lives the way that you want them to. Lord, we thank you um, that you are so magnificent. Um, we thank you for these signs of creation groaning um, and that the, the uh, world, that nature around us is crying out for you. God, we ask that human voices would be added to that in ways that we've never seen before and that um, we wouldn't make the rocks do all the work, Lord, but we would join them in, in crying out to you. And um, we understand why creation's groaning, Lord. A lot of us are groaning as well in our spirits, um, just at a loss of, of what's going on and what our role is as believers in this world. But Lord, we thank you for the gift of your Holy Spirit and that you are continually guiding each of us. Lord, help us to not be overwhelmed with the magnitude, but focus on the task before us and know that we can do it because you are equipping us to do so. In your precious name, amen. Amen. Praise God. And we look forward to hearing from you. Uh, Pastor Mally will be back with us next week and she will be delivering the message. All right, over to you, uh, Dr. Jackson, and bring us our youth uh, and uh, student moment. Basically, we're going to uh, introduce Natasha Pierce, who is the executive yeah. of NAMI, and I see that she is ready. Uh, so uh, let me turn it over to you, Natasha. I am not going to correct you. This is the youth moment. I'm going to accept that and claim that, and accept that <laughs> it's been a it's been a, a, an amazing last week. And I think the most notable thing that happened was on Tuesday evening, the USF Tampa Campus Black Student Union held two conversations during this, their wellness week. And the first was uh, for women, bonnets and blues. And the second was for the gentlemen. And I can't remember what the name of it was, but it was amazing. I was present, not in a NAMI capacity, but just as a mental health educator. There were two clinicians, Camille Francis and Dakila Johnson, and we were participants. We, well, they chose to have everyone come either in their uh, bonnet or their head wrap just to level the playing field because there were some adults uh, on, the, on the session. But what ensued was two hours of absolute transparency. Some of the most powerful conversations that I have had in a very long time. And it renewed my, my hope because I was thinking back on when I was their age and I did not have the level of awareness nor the self-advocacy that these young women had. And during those two hours, they shared their experience of being black young women on campus during a pandemic and during what is perhaps the most racially volatile time of their lives. We spoke very openly about depression, anxiety, ADHD. We spoke about allyship and how it's supposed to look. We spoke about medicine and diagnoses and how they feel it is weaponized. These are young women who have some very heavy uh, school loads, six classes, who wants to be in uh, elected office. And their affairs and their concerns were, if they speak up and they share what medicine works best for them, is that gonna be written in their file? Is it gonna be noted that they are you know, addicts or addicted? To, so some of them are really struggling through school because and with those concerns, we spoke about uh, how they have dealt with the pandemic. Many of them were personally affected by someone who had the coronavirus. Some actually died. And what it evidenced for me is 
want a need for more of these conversations. Black students definitely have a unique experience, but over the last three weeks, I know that all college students have a unique experience. And because of their age, they really lack some of the experience and to place everything that they're experiencing in context. So personally, I wanna continue those conversations and work alongside USF, University of Tampa, ACC. From a NAMI perspective, I have written them into our budget and support for the next year. So we're gonna be uh, working to establish NAMI on campus for all three locations. That's just a start. We're gonna provide them with all of the starting the conversation manuals, the NAMI on campus manuals. And we want this to be a growing partnership. The most important thing for me as I close is when I was looking at them, I was remembering where I was and what I was doing at their age. And it had me thinking about who's next. Over the last year, we've lost a lot of people, you know, Elijah Cummings, John Lewis, Ruth Ginsburg. And I remember how people celebrated them, but I also remember how people mourned, like, oh my God, there's a void. Who's gonna fill their shoes? And I made a personal commitment that I'm gonna do what I can to pour into the next generation so that there is another mental health educator that is as or more passionate than I am. There are students and people who are coming up and who are gonna be equipped to have these same conversations that we're doing now, because we may wanna to move to Dubai and do something differently. Who's <laughs> coming behind us? So I am really happy that the conversations are opening up. It's starting with the students and I'm not there to control or to lead them, but to work alongside them. So next week we'll have a student because they're all interested in sharing. And I thank you all for giving space for me to, to share. Thank you. I should really appreciate you sharing that information. Uh, that's really vital to um, really prepare the, the next generation to take in those positions. I'm looking forward and Natasha's going to be uh, doing something for Eastern Florida State College and uh, Minority Male Initiative uh, in that particular area. And we're just so excited about it. We really are. But thank you. You've done a great job. i going to pass it back over to uh, Dr. Emery, Dr. Reyes. Yes, and I want to chime in, uh, Natasha, there, um, and uh, invite you uh, this this Monday morning uh, from 9 to, you know, to 10, uh, to PHSC's Success Academy's uh, 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 meeting. And our Success Academy is uh, a newly formed a group there on, on campus uh, to assess and to supply the need to the underrepresented students, specifically our Black, Brown, and uh, Native American and Asian students. So I would love for you to come and present and um, and include us in your budget as well because I felt a little uh, left out when you said. <laughs> <laughs> I heard you say. I heard you say. I got it all. I'm, I recorded it. Too. I, it's, you said. Well, those are the Hillsborough ones. So here's the thing. I, I, I don't. I, I, I don't and see. I, I took that into consideration. I took that into consideration. Okay, as well. good. Well, I don't see any of my other NAMI affiliates here, but I'll preliminarily say that. We're working with, I'm, I'm, I'm going, I'm going You're to working I'm with, okay. Yes, we're working with Pasco, uh, okay. uh, NAMI as well. Uh, okay. I'm actually on the board of NAMI Pasco. All okay. right. So, well, here's a good thing for you. And I think everyone will be happy about this. For the last five days, NAMI Hillsborough, Pasco, Polk, and Pinellas have been it. working on a joint project. And uh, coming up soon, we'll be launching the NAMI Tampa Bay. So we're gonna start with modeling the unity that we want to see across the Tampa Bay area and stay tuned for all of that. If perhaps we can do something like this for all of the NAMIs. So oh, like stay tuned. Tuesday morning, mm -hmm. we can have like something like this for all the NAMIs. Let me just go ahead. We, we, yes. We, we have to talk, but Monday morning, please. I'd love to bring you in, all right? So we wanna bring on for the word uh, this morning like I said, we're going to hear from uh, our our dear uh, Pastor Matt, Pastor Matt next week, uh, and we're going to have uh, 
imam or uh, salt and close us up today. But we're going to hear from the word from Dr. Reverend Dr. Irvin Jackson. Uh, Reverend Dr. Irvin Jackson. Uh, he's he also he's the pastor of his church there, uh, as you can see, uh, Christ Point Oasis, and uh, he also uh, works for he's administrator for uh, Eastern Florida College. There he's over the MMI, the, the Minority Male Initiative there. So uh, let us give our attention to our dear Reverend Pastor and friend, uh, Reverend Dr. Irvin C. Jackson. Thank you, I really thank you. I appreciate uh, Dr. Ailes uh, for opening up this uh, opportunity, you know, and I'll be honest, this whole, this whole forum and teleconference has been a blessing to me, it really has. Uh, the opportunity to get to know you guys. Um, you know, I guess this week, not only this week, just really during all of the the uh, time that we've been going through, um, I've just been uh, in, in prayer with God to uh, to uh, open up the doors that need to be open and, and uh, place in front of me the things that I need to obtain. And uh, it would be interesting if we could get everything we wanted right when we wanted it. I mean, I think all of us, we would say, wow, you know, I need this, I need that. I moved into the area. I'm looking for things, this, that, and the other, fall in place. But one of the things that I began to recognize that we as parents, uh, when our children want things right then and there, we don't always give it to them right then and there because we recognize that they don't need everything right then and there. And then sometimes they may not necessarily have the maturity to handle everything that's given to them. At that particular time, I was thinking about that, and it just led me to a passage. The Lord uh, led me to a passage in Isaiah, the 40th chapter, the verse 31. And the text says, But they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. And uh, that passage actually resonated with me. It's part of a, mess a messianic uh, passage, actually, in the book of Isaiah, the first. Uh, 35 chapters of prophetic, which focus on the condemnation of the people for uh, their their sins. And uh, chapter 36 to 39, you see a historic perspective of how they were actually taken into bondage and captivity. But then 40 through 66, you see a messianic uh, theme of consolation. And that's really my purpose today. I really want to give a message of hope and consolation. And um, I really want to make a good case for that old saw that said, good things come to those who wait. Now the question is, what does it mean to wait? You know, what 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 does it mean wait on the Lord? Um, look, the concept of waiting on the Lord is, is to be in a state of, of readiness, in a state of, of tension. You know something's going to happen. I know God's going to do something, uh, but, but I don't know what he's going to do, and I don't know when he's going to do it. You know, sometimes, and I think all of us can can, can testify to this, we've been placed in hold, holding patterns. Right now, many of us, we're experiencing holding patterns. Uh, in the text, the word uh, wait comes from the Hebrew verb uh, kavah, which deals with, with an idea that's descriptive of being in a continual state of disciplined restraint, but yet it has... Uh, tension. It, it involves the notion of stretching that's combined with 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 tension, where you're enduring and, and you're waiting. Um, kind of reminds me of yoga. I, I like hot yoga, and, and and so every once in a while we get in these positions. And I was thinking of the standing bow pose, and and how that you're in this position, but you want to hold it for a particular time because you know that there's a benefit if you can just hold that position. Or, or imagine this, just imagine this. Imagine being an archer and uh, a military archer and, and you have uh, a bow and arrow and you've pulled the bow string and your eyes is on the target and you're just waiting for the command uh, to release uh, that bow. In a, in a sense, that kind of gives you an idea of what he's talking about when he says that we need to learn how to wait on the Lord. In fact, some of the versions that you read, they'll say hope in the Lord or trust in the Lord. I was looking at the Septuagint, and the Septuagint has uh, a form of the, uh, the, the verb, 
which deals with the idea of staying, uh, staying behind or staying under. In other words, when other people can't handle it and they have to walk away, you, you're, you're still hanging in there. You're, you're, you're bearing, I, I have a pit, thinking of a picture of, of someone holding up weight and enduring a weight that may have crushed others, but they're still holding on, um, continually holding out, constant persevering, uh, even when others might be giving up. And if we were to look around us right now, we recognize that we, we see all of that. We see a lot of people who, who are giving out. We see a lot of people who are tired because of all the things that are going on. But the text tells us to wait. Now, the object, the object is that we are to wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. And the word in the text actually is Yahweh. We wait on the Lord because he's a God of covenant. We wait on the Lord because he's a God of good promise. We wait on the Lord because he's a God that cannot lie. And one of the things that we know about him is he loves us. He cares about us and he wants our best. That's really what he wants. And so therefore, it says that no matter what we're dealing with, no matter where we are, no matter what point we are in life, we need to learn to wait on that God who's covenant with us, who cares about us, who loves us. Now, the purpose of this text is really um, showing descriptive outcomes of the one who does wait on the Lord in that manner. In other words, the reason that we wait is because there is a benefit. Now, here's, here's the benefit. The benefit says, they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. In, in other words, what happens is when we wait, the process of waiting on the Lord is self-energizing in and of itself. In other words, when we wait on the Lord, we find unending sources of renewal. When we wait on the Lord, it's like plugging into a battery. I like the contemporary English version. For the contemporary English version says, those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. You know, I'm telling you, all of us need some strength right now because life can tap us out. Life can tap us out. This COVID virus and being locked up in your houses and all of that kind of stuff, it can tap you out and we need strength. And uh, I'm telling you, especially you can get tapped out if your focus is not on the Lord. See, we need to focus on the Lord. But if our focus is not on the Lord, then I'm telling you, we can get tapped out simply because we have a tendency to create false narratives. We have a tendency to begin to pursue uh, um, illusions rather than visions. Just a little bit ago, uh, Pastor Natalie uh, began to mention the concept of illusions and the illusion of control. And, and, and what happens is sometimes, uh, you know, our problem with creating illusions and trying to pursue them, it, it leads to disillusionment. You see, even when you look at the word illusion, uh, the, the, the prefix of illusion is ill, and ill is a state of sickness, actually a state of insanity. You see, a lot of times we're following insane narratives, and uh, no wonder we find ourselves uh, frustrated. No wonder we find ourselves uh, with a lot lack of energy. In fact, you look at some individuals who are very prominent in this world who have moved to suicide simply because they're following illusions uh, and they're disillusioned uh, because of creating a mirage. You know what a mirage is. You see, a mirage is something uh, that, that uh, appears based off of your desire in a moment of despair. That's really what happens, and it's not even real. And so the problem is that sometimes we find ourselves doing that. We create narratives, and then we, we bind that narrative uh, to spell out our illusion, and we begin to move toward that. But false narratives, you know, they may have elements of truth, but the problem is, is ultimately they're going to move the wrong way. Think about Eve's narrative, the narrative that was created by uh, Satan. If you eat of this, then you'll be like God's. But actually, basically, her decision, which seemed to be right to her, led to death is really what it did. So we have to be careful that we 
began to pursue God-created narratives, narratives that are grounded in truth, narratives that are based in a God that has covenanted with us and has made it possible for us to move toward that because he's there with us. Uh, I was thinking about David and Psalm 139 and David, uh, Psalm 139 and verse, uh, the, the 16th verse, it says, your eyes saw my unformed body. It says, all the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. Now, I know that's messianic, but I began to think about how Jesus followed a narrative and how that there is a narrative for our life. And if we follow that narrative focused on God, then we'll find ourselves being able to step free and break free from those illusions. Because truth, truth is what uh, allows us to be released from our illusion. And it gives us spiritual vision. It helps us to be able to see when we have the right kind of vision, think about Jesus. It helps you to foresee the difficulties that lie here. It helps you to help people that are walking with you to begin to see what God is doing in your life, even though you have to wait on him. It empowers your self-renewal because you have the Holy Spirit beginning to help you and empower you as you move toward it. So we need to learn how to wait. David said it in Psalm 27 and verse 14, wait on the Lord, be of good courage. He'll strengthen your heart. He says, wait, I say, on the Lord. Now, here's another thing about self-renewal that I want to share with you. And that is um, self-renewal comes from trusting God's pace. Self-renewal comes from trusting. You see, it's about his time. You know, people, they used to say it like this. They say, you can't work, you can't hurry God. You'll just have to wait. You have to trust him and give him time no matter how long it takes. He's not about to get hurried, but he'll be there. Don't you worry. He may not come when you want him, but he's right on time. You know, the text in this says, it says, if we wait on the Lord, it says that these those who do it will soar with wings like eagles. They'll run and not grow weary. They'll walk and not faint. In other words, we have to trust in his. Because let me tell you this, not everybody's going to fly. That's right. Some individuals will walk while others are able to run. That's right. When you begin to look at it, all of us are at different aspects and different places in life. But here's the point of the matter. The point of the matter is that we've got to learn to trust Tim enough to be content in whatever station of life we find ourselves in. In other words, at this moment right now, in my presence, I need to learn how to wait on the Lord because I know the Lord has the best for me and he's there with me and so you know the question is 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 that a proven strategy you know i'm saying a lot but is it a proven strategy well i believe it is and i think we have the testimony of paul i think we have the testimony of jesus i mentioned before but paul said in all things he says i've learned how to be content he says when i'm in need i know how to be content when I have plenty, I know how to be content. In every situation, whether I'm fed, whether I'm hungry, whether I'm living in plenty, whether I'm living in want, he says, I can do all things <laughs> through Christ Jesus who gives me strength. So therefore, when I wait on him, he's always given me a constant renewal. Whether somebody's in the prison, whether they're experiencing pain, whether we're going through a pandemic, whether we're dealing with perplexities of life, whether we're having to deal with this political turmoil that we're facing even right now, we need to wait on the Lord. Because when we wait on the Lord, we recognize that he'll never leave us, he'll never forsake us. Paul said it this way in Romans the 8th chapter. He said, who will separate us from the love of Christ? Is there some trouble? Your hardship, persecution, famine, nakedness, danger, sword. No, it's written, he says, for your sake we face death all day long, and we're considered sheep to be slaughtered. But he says, no, but that's not the reality. Here's the reality. And all these things were more than conquerors. And all these things were more than conquerors through him who loves us. And so therefore, even death or life or angels or demons or powers, height, death, no matter what, it says they're not able to separate us from God's love. So therefore, if there's ever any reason to trust and to, to wait on the Lord, I think we see it. 
I think if we learn how to wait on him right now, I don't know what your situation is. I don't know what your circumstance is. And I know we wish we could change it right now. But wait, wait, I say, on the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. If, if this was church, I would open up the doors of the church right now and and, and ask if there is anyone uh, here uh, who, who, who who is not saved. And, and, and <laughs> um, yeah, bro, I, I feel like opening up the church, the doors of the church, and I, and, and, and I wish that I, I could pass the virtual offering plate right about now because you do <laughs> preach Thank you. a word from on high. Did your hearts burn inside you when the man of God came? Wait on the look. That is, that is, a, that, that, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a word. Uh, illusion versus vision. Oh my goodness. That, that was, you just, you just bought it this morning. Thank you. Thank you, brother, for the word. Um, this morning for our community uh, update, I believe we have uh, Kathy Gunn from uh, Baycare. Is that correct? That is correct. Good, good morning good to morning. everybody. I have been truly blessed and honored by this forum. I've been attending since week one. I've only missed two meetings and special thank yous to Dr. Ailes, Rod Cunningham, Dr. Jackson, NAMI, ASAP, all of uh, Humana, all of the amazing uh, people that are on this forum, you have enriched my lives. And just personally saying that uh, I too have experienced this pandemic with all of you. I have had deaths in my family during this pandemic, and I've suffered the anxiety and depression that this pandemic has um has a portrayed on all of us in some manner. And I just want you to know that, you know, I'm right there with all of you and you all are beautiful. And you, I am so honored to call you my brothers and sisters in Christ. So today I'm gonna land this uh, forum into a more cheerful, um, and I'm gonna share my screen right now, Dr. Ailes, okay? And I'm gonna give you co-host ability so you can do that. Okay, thank you. I'm going to give uh, Mr. Tia Spellman. Okay. Should be starting. Are you seeing my screen? Let's see. Why is that not? It's not the working, okay. Help me out here. More screen sharing. Okay. It does not seem to want to be working. So let's see. Share screen again. Okay, here we go. So, good morning. Well, once again, I'm a faith community nurse coordinator. My name is Kathy Gunn. And today, um, I thank all of you in this entire faith and wellness forum for providing this enriching environment once again for all of us. Um, I have been a nurse for 27 years and certified in trauma and resiliency. I feel very passionate about bringing support for behavioral health to our faith communities because I've experienced firsthand how difficult it is to help a loved one with serious mental illness. And I see the value of what I'm about to share would have helped me so much in the past. At this time, take out your cell phones and instead of turning them off, let's be a little different and perhaps send a quick text to someone important to you or a kind thought, even possibly a GIF. Please feel free to also share a gratitude thought in the chat section today. Perhaps somebody has showed you gratitude or, set, or you have shared gratitude with others. 
we would love to see them. So once again, welcome to a glimpse of the guide to building resiliency that we created for you. Resiliency is a concept that refers to the dynamic process of positive adaptation in the faces of adversity or significant stress. The simple terminology is bounce back ability. You see, in research in the 1930s at Notre Dame, they asked 180 nuns to write letters about their experience at school. But 70 years later, in the year 2000, they removed these letters from the time capsule and content coded them. The results of this research was the nuns who expressed more positive expressive lived an average of a decade longer and were healthier than their less cheerful peers. This was the basis for assessing how people thrive on the road to recovery by developing resilience. Scientists have correlated these 10 positive emotions to resiliency. Today, we will be focusing on just one, gratitude. So if you are experiencing an all-time low, feeling discouraged today, please just visualize yourself walking over to your closet right now, opening up the door, opening up your behavioral health first aid kit, and grabbing and reaching for gratitude. Think of gratitude as the easy, quick fix. It's like the Band-Aid we grab first. If someone or yourself is feeling dispar disparity, Remember, gratitude is the thinking about banking tool. Grat According to um, the research in science, there are a few health benefits of developing resiliency by practicing gratitude. In this word cloud that I have created, I've made it in the shape of a heart and I have put all the benefits improved sleep, reduced aggression, improved relationships, increased social bonds, improved self-esteem and enhanced mental strength. But most of all, it improves your overall physical health by increasing higher energy levels and stronger immunity. When we practice gratitude, we increase DHEA, dehydroepiandosterone, a natural hormone that is secreted by our adrenal glands, which help promote happiness, excitement, love, contentment, serenity. DHEA counteracts the effects of cortisol, where we are in high stress, we are in the fight or flight or freeze mode. Many times, we just go through simply saying we need to be uh, gracious or have gratitude, but we don't take the time to really learn the process and steps of how to develop that. So I encourage you and um, ask you to share these three steps and teach the next generation how to, to develop gratitude. According to Dr. Sexton at Duke University, there are three easy steps to develop. First, try a daily gratitude list verbally or written. Remain quiet and ask for guidance for the day. And then third, you must apply the giving of gratitude to others. Now I have a video that shows the influence of gratitude in our lives in a very lighthearted way. So I hope you enjoy. Shut up. <laughs> what? Wait, wait. Always made me so embarrassed. <laughs> What makes you happy? Having fun? Hanging out with friends? Delicious food? Making money? Well, consider this. Psychologists have scientifically proven that one of the greatest contributing factors to overall happiness in your life is how much gratitude you show. Yeah? Think about that. Go ahead and marinate on it for a second. You can thank me later if you want. It'll make you feel better according to this study. You go ahead and click on it and read it if you want. Or, you can keep watching because we read it we thought it might be fun to test out for ourselves. We gathered a selection of volunteers to act as our subjects. First, we gave them a test. They didn't know what we were looking for, but it gave us a pretty good idea of their current level of happiness. We asked them to close their eyes and think of somebody who was really influential in their life, somebody who did something really amazing or important for them. We had them write down as much as they could about why this person was so important. Now, a lot of them thought at this point the experiment was over until we really put them on the spot and tried to get them to call that person 
and read what they wrote about them. Thank you, Jessica. We are going to have to have you call your mother. So who is that right person for you? Person is my sister, Erica. We're going to give Erica a call. <laughs> okay. Who did you end up picking? Friend of mine, uh, Craig Ames. Her name is Dora. Accounting, accounting instructor. Really? Is this somebody you're still in touch with today? No, I'm assuming that he's passed on. That's, that's a shame. Great beyond. You up for it? Um, uh, yes. What would you say if we called up Dora? Oh, well, we can try, but she lives in Britain. In Britain? No, oh, no, never by heart. This is awful. That's fine. I don't know. My mom's never by heart. If it's true that uh, those who are going on are looking down on us, maybe he realized that he's correct. Hey, sweetheart. Hey, how you doing? Um, yeah. You got a second? Where you at? In a hotel? I am. I'm in the hotel. Come on, you scared me. We asked if I had no, a second or something wrong. No, I'm on this. I'm on like this little TV show, and they told me to talk about the person that influenced me the most, and I picked you, and them, and they're making uh -huh. me call. They're making me call you. Oh, wonderful! Hi, you reached Craig. I'm not here right now. At the tone, please record your message. Oh, come on. <laughs> Hello? Hi. Hi. Erica? It's me. All right, so i got to read you this paragraph. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Go ahead. All right. All right. The person that influenced me the most would be my mother, Marlo Dawson. She is a single mother of two. She is a very hard worker and dedicated to her family. Hey, Craig. This is Loie. Um, this is going to be a funny little voicemail, so I hope you enjoy it. I'm so sorry for calling you at four o'clock in the morning. <laughs> I have to read this to you, okay? And you can't say anything or, I don't know. You can respond, but I probably will just keep going. <laughs> okay? Is everything okay? Yes, but I have to read this out loud to you. The person who has had the biggest impact on my life, outside of Jesus Christ, who is responsible for my existence, was my college accounting instructor. He had a joy and enthusiasm for his job like no other teacher I have ever known. I love her to death and she keeps me going with positive talk. She is a woman that knows what she wants and won't give up until it is achieved. Oh, it's so scary. I, I, I don't know what, I'm about to cry because it's so beautiful. I, 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 I have, I have wonderful. I first met Craig on an independent feature film set in Whitefish, Montana. I recently have been sending Craig a lot of positive thoughts as he suffered a series of health problems. Despite his medical problems, he's continued to work and take pleasure in the small things in life, like sitting quietly with his wife Janine on the porch. Erica is my older sister and my best friend. Sometimes it even feels like we are twins. She's my number one fan and my number one supporter. She makes me happy because despite all my mistakes and my decisions, she still loves me no matter what. Your friendship is everything. And you are you are one of the most important person in my life. Even when she has a kid and many children, I will love her more than her kids. Okay. So in conclusion, I would like to um, just say that that video um, goes on to share so that people can think about a person that means um, something very special to their life. And um, at this time, if we were working with the faith community, I would actually stop the video at the end and allow the audience and participants to write their own gratitude letter and apply the steps that I just taught them. So in conclusion, I would like to emphasize to help someone out of despair and work towards resiliency, hand them the tool of gratitude. Writing a gratitude letter on a regular basis every four to six weeks can help your body be healthy over the longevity of your life. And third, share the gratitude so both parties can experience the health benefits of the longevity of life. So please, at this time, feel free to take out your cell phones and enter into your cell phone, the BayCare Behavioral Health phone number, in case you have a loved one, a friend, a neighbor, or somebody you really care about that you want to help them. The number is 1-800-878-5471. And if 
after seeing just the glimpse of the presentation, that you would like to bring this presentation out to your health community virtually or in the future uh, in present, please feel free to email me at kathy.gun at baycare.org. Thank you. Awesome, thank you for that presentation. And uh, I really loved the uh, the video and the interaction um, that uh, they they uh, they had with individuals who have influenced them. I think all of us are thinking about people who have uh, influenced us positively, and hopefully we'll do the same thing. Yeah, that's right. I guess we're moving to question and answers period. So I'm going to hand it back over to uh, uh, Dr. Ailes. Dr. Ailes. I'm, I'm, I'm over here um, struggling <laughs> to keep the water from coming out of my, from, from the reservoirs of my tear ducts in my eye uh, there. Um, sure, if I can uh, open up the floor for questions and uh or concerns or, or, or remarks, I would I would love for 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 you all to re, to respond uh, this morning. Do we have any 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 questions or any responses uh, for for anyone from uh, our opening uh, prayer uh, from uh, Pastor Natalie, um, our dear sister uh, Natasha, our our pastor Pastor. Jackson, and of course, our dear sister, Kathy uh, Gunn. Does anybody have any questions or responses this morning? Mine would be for Kathy. Uh, I would love that presentation, and I'll reach out to the other four NAMIs. Our message this entire year is you are not alone, and I think that presentation would be a perfect joint collaborative part of our collaboration as we head into the end of the year with so many people who are already hurting uh, because of the holidays because they're looking at the year in review it makes you pause and reset and i'll be emailing you awesome that would be my pleasure natasha yes and and i'd like to echo uh, natasha's uh sentiments as well uh as uh, I'm uh, connected with uh, the faith leaders here, both in Pasco and, uh, and Hernando. Um, I, I truly, truly enjoyed that, that presentation. In fact, uh, when, it, when, it, when it was over, I was like, well, you know what, it's over? <laughs> uh, and so, uh, yes, it made, it, it, made me, it made me remember um, uh, a, a sermon titled "The Black The Black Dove," um, and uh, in fact, the pastor Pastor Lydell Letson, it was his sermon actually who, who preached it, and uh, talked about you know gratitude, you know, um, and gratitude as a medicine. Uh, and that's what I got out of it. Uh, I, I, I okay. really needed to hear. That I, you know, I when, when I get off of this Zoom this morning at ten o'clock, uh, I'm going to just call up some people that I'm just grateful for and let them know that that, that I am grateful uh, to them because of what I saw today. And I hope some other people who saw it are are, are are moved to do the very same thing. Do we have any other questions for our dear sister or anyone? Yeah, I think Kathy started something positive. <laughs> yes. And, and just to let everyone know, just a little background about myself is when I come into your faith communities, I can speak genuinely and authentically with the audience about resiliency. I am the poster child, grown up adult of resiliency. Uh, approximately, just so you know my life story, I'm an open book. Uh, approximately in the newborn days of my life, I was almost drowned by my mother um, from mental illness and I survived and my siblings too. Went through the foster care system for a short time and I found the love 
of God there in the family. Um, I was reunited with my family and have had a faith just like Gideon where God uses our, our weaknesses for his glory. He has used my weaknesses for his glory. I have overcome domestic violence. I have overcome uh, fatal lethal levels of carbon monoxide accidentally by a uh, star key ignition car, which almost took out my entire family. So I can totally speak to the audience of that through the storms of life, you can come out that other side with joy and gratitude and love. And so, you know, that's what it's all about is letting people know that we are here. We've been through the storms and we know how to get through them together and they're not alone. So just a personal testimony. And I hope that if there's pastors out there, you know, share this so that we can get the message out there that, you know, love the person um, through developing resiliency. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that testimony, Kathy. And uh, me as a pastor, I would definitely take this message and carry it forward. Uh, as I said, the black duck, uh, I'm sorry, it was a black swan. As black swan, I will carry this forward uh, to, other, to other people as well. Gratitude. Praise God. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Dr. Rails. It's a pleasure this, being here. Amen. This is like a revival uh, this morning. Does anybody else have any uh, responses, questions, or concerns this morning? Do, do we have any new people who are on this morning who would like to just introduce themselves uh, because you were here uh, for the very first time and uh, we, we, we you, you want to introduce yourself and we like to for you to introduce yourself so we can get to know you. Anyone? Okay, so I'm going to be calling on some folks. So, Ms. Atia Spellman, could you uh, tell us who you are and what you're doing in the community? Good morning, everyone. Good morning. So, so I am Matias Spellman, president of the Black Coalition of Hernando County. And um, what we are doing in Hernando County um, is we are educating uh, families of the African American experience. Um, what we have started was uh, meet the candidates. That was our big push because we wanted to educate. Um, educate families in Hernando County of who they are voting for. We found out that there were really no platforms in Hernando County and uh, we started doing that so that voters were <clears throat> voters were educated. Uh, during the election process, we provided transportation to the polls so that families could get out and vote. And uh, also what we are doing, we've had, uh, we're adopting families for the holidays. So right now we have 21 families adopted, over 100 children that will be receiving Christmas gifts. We have a Thanksgiving Day drive that we are working on uh, where we'll be providing food for our communities. Um, we are starting a peer support group. Um, so then that way we are linking uh, families or children who are having issues in school with peers just like them, uh, linking them with homeschool children. Um, our organization is new to the community. We found that there was a need for um, educating um, African Americans in our community because there were a lot of racial tensions going on, especially uh, when we decided to do the peace walk. So we just wanted to fill that void. So I'm glad to be here. I find out that you cannot fill from an empty cup and my cup was really empty today. And everything that was going on filled my cup. So now I know there's so much more work to do. And, and you know, you talk about um, illusions and vision, and that was really needed. So I thank you, um, Dr. Jackson, um, to the gratitude letters. Um, I know I have plenty to send, so I'm definitely going to be writing. So thank you, Kathy. And we will definitely be reaching out to you um, because that's a, that's a message that we all need to share with those in our community. 
So thank you for the opportunity, Dr. Ailes. Praise God. Thank you so very much, uh, Ms. Spellman, and all that you do uh, in the community. And please, uh, you all uh, feel free to reach out to her. We got one more minute. Uh, Ms. Black, Rontero Black, come on and tell us what you're doing. And uh, and we can then uh, pass it over to Imam Hussain to take us out. Sister Black. I guess she stepped away. Uh, Imam Hussain, give us the closing prayer, brother. So uh, <laughs> thank you, everyone. Uh, it was really insightful today, and Kathy, that was a very unique uh, new tradition that was added uh, to call someone that you have an effect on. That uh, this reminds me of you know last night when the hurricane was happening. It's like you know it was one of my mentors was seven years old, like you know and. He's still active, but he's like, you know, you have to take advantage of these moments and thank people before, you know, it's too late. Um, so I'd like to end uh, with the prayer. Bismillah ar In the name of God, the most gracious, the most merciful, the extremely merciful. We ask God that uh, who's closer to us than our own jugular veins, who knows what we think, he knows the hardships we face, that we keep an online uh, constant communication with him. We pray to him, we seek him for help, for protection, for sustenance, for guidance for direction, for strength in times of weakness. We have a lot of expectations in God, and through those expectations and love for God, it helps us lower expectations from others because we keep only his happiness and his, um, his uh, you know, the path towards God. We ask God that whatever, whatever mental health issue we have, whatever hardship we have, whether it's financial, whether it's family, whether it's a struggle, whether it's racism, whether it's nationalism, whether it's a status, whatever it is. So we ask God to remove these diseases of the hearts from our hearts and unite us and remove those feelings with compassion, love, and mercy towards one another, that we break the barriers and labels that people try to put on us and try to build the bridges together and realize that we have so much more in common, whether it's Muslim, you know, Jews and Christians and others, uh, regardless of who you are. And we ask God that this gathering, you know, is a safe space for everyone to come and open up May God blesses this gathering, blesses everyone here, and give us the rod, uh, his health and recovery and his voice better than ever before. And everyone here who is living in their family, may God grant all you guys health and strength through this life and this journey of life. May God protect us through the hurricanes and storms and protect us through anything that may harm us and protect and we ask God to protect us and use us and never replace us. As we have in the Quran, God, you know, Jesus said, God made me a source of blessing wherever I am. So I ask God to make us a source of blessing wherever we are. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Imam Hassan. Uh, and use us, never replace us. We're going to, uh, uh, Miss Black, we're going. I'm going to ask that you come back next week and you be ready to give us uh, what you're doing uh, at, at PHSC uh, with, 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 with our students. All right. Blessings to you all. Thank you. Uh, this has been Rich. Uh, be blessed. Uh, have a safe week. And look forward to seeing you all next next Thursday. Blessings. Thanks, all. <laughs>